Hello everyone and welcome to a game from round 8 of this year's FIDE World Rapid Championship. It is Arjun Ergesi versus Vladimir Fedosev and it could be one of the games that uh, has great impact on the final standings of this event. So let's check it out and then we are going to discuss what happened throughout the entire 9 rounds uh, and uh, what is uh, the current standing. So Arjun uh, has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to e4. And aside from Magnus Carlsen who... Uh, is basically defending his uh, World Rapid Champion title. Uh, Arjun has to, has to win this event in order to qualify for the Candidates Tournament uh, and overtake um, uh, Gukesh uh, in the FIDE circuit. So let's see what happens here. e4, e5, knight to f3, we have knight to c6 and bishop to b5. Arjun goes for the Rui Lopez and we have knight to f6, uh, the Berlin defense, uh, d3. And now uh, the only two moves that you will ever see played here are bishop to c5 and pawn to d6. But but here we have bishop to d6, and uh, although it's very unlikely that you will see this in classical, for rapid it's a, it's a viable attempt, and not a lot of games in the database with uh, uh, with this idea. Uh, we have castles and pawn to a6 now, attacking the bishop, bishop to a4, and just castles. We have pawn to c3, uh, rook to e8, and now rook to e1. Uh, we have pawn to b5, attacking the bishop, bishop back all the way to c2, and now the bishop is tucked away uh, all the way to f8. And now uh, there is a game uh, Alan uh, Pichot versus uh, Sergio Slipak uh, that was played in 2014 uh, where a4 was played but here we have pawn to d4 and it is now as of move 10 that we have a completely new game. So okay pawn to d6 uh, we have bishop to e3 and now pawn to h6 we have knight b to d2 uh, knight to g4 now challenging the bishop as the bishop really has no squares and now pawn to a4 challenging the queen side here uh, bishop to d7 and now pawn to h3. Uh, asking the knight, do you want to go back or do you capture on e3? And okay, uh, Vladimir captures. Uh, we have rook, ca uh, sorry, f captures on e3 was played. Knight to e7 uh, and now rook back to f1. And here we have pawn to c5, a most interesting pawn sacrifice by Vladimir. Uh, asking Arjun, are you maybe interested in a double capture on e5? And it is objectively the best move. So uh, Arjun goes for it. We have captures, captures, and knight captures on e5. And now, okay, he has uh, he has an extra pawn, but it's a doubled e pawn. So we'll see um, uh, what he can do with it. Or rather, no. No, sorry, after c5, d captures um, on c5 was played, and only after d captures, then knight captures on e5 was played. It's the, the different move order. Uh, bishop to e6, and now knight back to d3, putting pressure on the c5 pawn, and now knight to c6, defending the c5 pawn with the bishop on f8. We have knight to f4, going after the bishop here, and knight to e5. Uh, we have a captures on b5, a captures, and even a rook trade on a8. So captures, captures, uh, and now uh, queen to h5, putting uh, some pressure on uh, Vladimir's king side here. We have queen to b8, uh, also you have to defend the knight here, uh, and uh, knight to f3 now, putting pressure on the knight. So here comes bishop to c4, the rook also helps out with the defense of the knight, and the, the rook on f1 is hanging. We have rook to d1, and now pawn to g6, kicking away the queen. Uh, there aren't any tricks with something like knight captures, as the knight on e5 nicely helps out with the defense. We have queen to h4, uh, and now pawn to g5, seemingly winning a piece, but no, there's queen to g3. Three. Uh, of course, the pawn cannot move. Uh, knight captures on f3, and now you have to capture with the g pawn. If you capture with the queen, of course, you lose a piece here. So g captures, and just bishop to g7. And here Vladimir says, all right, your king set is a bit uh, ruined. Um, I do have some pawns uh, advanced in front of my king, but uh, I like my position better. Uh, knight to h5 goes after the bishop and also offers a queen trade here, uh, and uh, Arjun uh, trade. Uh, sorry, Vladimir trades. We have a uh, queen captures on g3. Knight captures and now bishop back to e6, putting pressure on that h3 pawn, so king to g2, uh, rook to a8, and now uh, bishop to b1. Uh, we have bishop to b3, attacking the rook, rook to f1, at some point preparing pawn to f4, and now pawn to b4, uh, opening up this diagonal for the for the dark square bishop, uh, but not right away. First, bishop to c4 was played, attacking the rook, and only after rook to f2, pawn to b4 was played, uh, and this is where the magic happens. We have c captures on b4, c captures, and pawn to f4, and with this uh, pawn to f4 push, uh, Arjun uh, makes uh, a losing move, or maybe close losing, maybe with perfect defense you can play it, but not really. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute best move for uh, Fedosev while I give you a couple of seconds.
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, finding this wild idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is a uh, rook to a1. That's right. The bishop on b1 cannot be cannot be saved. You cannot play rook to f1. The bishop covers that. Uh, you cannot go to d3. The bishop covers that as well. And you cannot go to c2 because just pawn to b3. And again, the bishop is trapped. So what can you do after rook to a1? Not much. Rook to c2 was played attacking the bishop here. Uh, but now just bishop back to e6. Uh, again, if bishop to d3, then even there's a check and white wins. You just blunder the bishop on d3. So here after rook to c2, bishop to e6 was played. Now pawn to f5 by Arjun uh, and rook captures on b1. We have f captures on e6, f captures and now rook to c8 with check. King to f7 and now rook to c7 with check. We have king to g6 uh, and now rook to c6. Going after the e6 pawn uh, and now rook captures on b2 with check. The problem is uh, the b pawn is now a passed pawn and it is already on b4. Uh, king to f3, we have king to f7 and now rook to c7 check. Once again, we have king to g8, uh, rook to c8 with check. King to h7 hiding the king away from checks and now rook to c7. Now you have to be careful if you hurry up with the advancement of the pawn, something like knight h5 will uh, cost you the bishop on g7. Uh, so rook to h2. Now, what's the what's the trick here? Can you just go knight h5 here and win the bishop? Uh, we'll know, of course, if knight h5. Now, now just rook captures on h3, attacks the rook and the knight. And even if king to g4, you will just play rook to h4, check, kick away the king, and pick up the knight. So uh, that's how he deals with it. Uh, we have king to g4 now, defending the pawn, and king to g6 uh, getting out of the pin. We have rook to c6 going after the pawn here, and now uh, pawn to b3. Now you can see that rook captures on e6 um, can be played, but it's not all that impressive. Rook captures on e6, uh, or rather it is impressive because here you have to play king to h7 to actually be winning this position. But Filosa played king to f7, and now Arjun is back in the game. He plays rook to b6, uh, pawn to b2, okay, the bishop defends it, but now comes rook to b7 with check. And here Arjun drops it. As you can see, he was already down to uh, 16 seconds on the clock when he made the move. Uh, the key move to find here was knight to f5. And now you have some threats against the bishop here. And if bishop to e5, you have rook to b7 check. And now after king to f8, you will uh, have this knight to d4 move uh, where uh, the, the bishop no longer defends the pawn so you don't have time for rook to h1 uh, or you, you lose the pawn and also the king comes all the way to e6 and then you will have uh, uh, plenty of resources to draw or maybe if black even makes a slight inaccuracy even checkmate the black king however after b2 rook to b7 was rushed here uh, by arjun we have king to e8 uh, and now king to f5 we have king to d8 now comes pawn to e5 cutting off the bishop uh, rook captures on h3 and now knight to e4 giving up the e3 pawn uh, but first rook to f3 with check you don't want to uh, just capture and allow rook captures on b2 first rook to f3 with check and now what do you play here uh, going back with the king, uh, then you, you no longer have the possibility of entering the game with the king. What you have to play here uh, is king to e6. Interestingly, that's not what Arjun played. Arjun played king to g6 and he uh, sort of blundered the e5 pawn. Uh, but I will show it just because it's um, uh, very important. The rook captures an e3. Now you give a check on d7. King to c8, knight to d6 with check. And after king to b7, uh, rook to b7 with check. Only square for the black king is the a8 square. King to a8 and now rook rook captures on a2. Of course, you cannot capture the bishop as then b1 becomes a queen. So rook captures on b2 and now you will find rook captures on e5 with check. King to f7 and now something like rook d5 attacking the knight and the rook here, but it doesn't matter. Rook to a2 with check, king to b8 and now uh, due to the uh, absence of the black king, uh, you will be able to gobble up uh, the pawn, something like knight e4 and then you bring the king in and you will be able uh, to win the pawns. Uh, the, the bishop is attacked, you will have to move the bishop, now comes king to g6 and you can push those pawns but it's not really... Uh, you know, gonna accomplish anything. H5, let's say knight g3, you go after the pawn here. H4, now just knight f1, and after g3, you will play knight captures on g3. You can even give up a knight for two pawns, and it will be a draw. So uh, this is how Arjun should have played it. But he played king to g6, 
uh, and now just bishop captures on e5. The pawn is defended. There is no rook capture on b2. Uh, he gave up uh, the pawn uh, for nothing. But he did play the move with three seconds uh, on the clock, to be fair. So knight to d2, he will, of course, still try to fight. Uh, rook f6 check. We have king to h5, and now rook to c6. And even if you capture this pawn, there are still two uh, connected uh, passers on the king side. We have knight to f3, attacks the bishop, uh, bishop to c3. Knight to d4, uh, and just rook to f6. We have knight to e2 now attacking the bishop and bishop to e5 dominating the knight on e2. So knight to d4 again cutting off the uh, bishop from the defense of the pawn. Uh, but now rook f2 nicely defending the pawn. We have king to g4, uh, king to c8 kicking away the rook. And now the black king will start marching forward. We have rook to b5, king to c7. We have rook to b3. Uh, king to d6. We have rook to b5. Uh, now bishop captures on d4. Uh, it's been it's been there long enough. E captures king to c6. Uh, rook to b3 and just king to d5. There is no stopping the black king. Uh, we have rook to b4 defending here but now king to e4 we have king to g3 attacking the rook rook to d2 and now just king to g4 but as Ar arjun played this he was also in this position on move 70 uh, that he resigned the game uh, as there is nothing more to be done here uh, the, uh whatever you do is simply in insufficient uh doesn't really matter how you want to go about this you can just for example check the king king h5 rook h2 check uh there will be no capturing of the pawns on the king side and once you once you move the king doesn't really matter where or you go here uh, it's just a, a matter of a few rook moves uh, and um uh, that's pretty much it. You can go rook to c2, put the king behind the pawn, uh, or, or you can even uh, keep the rook there guarding these pawns and bring the king over here. Uh, a, 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 anything will be uh, enough to win. There, there's no move for white that white can make here. Uh, so yeah, uh, very nicely done by uh, by uh, Vladimir Fedosev. Uh, uh, always a challenge playing against him, regardless of the time format. Uh, Arjun uh, bounces back in the next round. Uh, let me just uh, check who against. But he, uh, yeah, he he faced um, uh, he faced Armenian Grandmaster Robert uh, Hovhannisyan, uh, and he bounced back sort of into the lead as these are the standings after the uh, the first nine rounds. Uh, so let's check them out. So the uh, three leaders with six and a half points, Magnus Carlsen, Vladimir Fedosev, and Yu Yang Yi. Uh, Magnus had a chance against Vincent Keimer in the final round. He was better in the end game, but then he just uh, blundered uh, into an, he blundered into equality. Uh, and uh, he wasn't able to, to maintain the lead in the tournament. So we have three of them on six and a half. Then with six, we have Ivan Chaparinov, Daniel Dubo, Vili Gujarati, uh, Voldar Murzin, Temur Rajabov, uh, Vincent Kamer, and Puya Idani. Uh, and then with five and a half, a whole lot of people, uh, Subramanian Baram, uh, Barat, uh, Arjun Erigaisi, also after his bounce back into the in, in the final round, Maxima Vashir Lagrav also won his final round game. Then Rapport, uh, Anton David Giharo, Kirill Shevchenko, Shangyu uh, Shu, uh, Nihal Sarin, Maxim Shigaev, uh, Jakongir Vakidov, uh, Maxim Matlakov, Pavel Ponkratov, uh, Alexander Gishu, Giga Kuparace, and Levon Aronyan. Imagine a tournament where Levon Aronyan is 25th. That's how, how strong the comp competition is here. Uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Uh, a couple of more rounds to go. And uh, will it be, will Magnus Carlsen be able to defend his last year's title? Uh, will Arjun be able to qualify to the candidates tournament? Or will we have something else? Uh, we, we'll, we, we'll see what happens. Uh, I haven't covered all that many games today. Only two games. So use that hashtag suggestion. And if you have a really nice one, I'm very much looking forward to, uh, to, to checking out your suggestion. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, tough luck for, for Arjun. But like I said, he bounced back in the next round. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Seydou Dia, Isaac Davis, Martin Georg Paparik, uh, Carlos Rudy, and Timothy Rozon for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, continuing the coverage of this wonderful event uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.